Next, we're going to look at ductal deformation, how rocks look when they have been folded. Now, it's useful to, to define folds and to be able to measure particular properties on folds because folds can be quite different. And so we define a few things about folds, and you can see in this diagram in the upper left some of the terminology that we use. The limbs of the folds are the sides that are tilted in one direction or another. The hinge is the area where that direction of tilt changes. The limbs on one side of the hinge are tilted, dipped in one direction, and the limb on the other side is dipped in the other direction. So the hinge is the line where that change of dip happens, and you can say there's no dip there. If you look at the different layers here, you can see the hinge line defined on the green layer, and then on the brown dotted layer, and then on the brown dashed layer, and on the orange layer underneath that. Each one of those hinge lines can be linked together into one plane, and we call that the axial plane. So those are very useful things to define. We can measure the strike and dip of an axial plane. We can measure the orientation of a hinge line too, and to distinguish it, we call that orientation trend and plunge, but it's the same idea, the compass direction, and then the tip of it on a line or on a plane. And those that information can tell us a lot about the strength of the deformation, the strength of the force that caused that form, fold to form. Now, folds form on all kinds of scales, and you can see in the upper right a very large fold. This must have been a lot of force to cause this very striking folding of these layers tightly um, up and down and up and down at very tight angles. But folds also are visible often on a outcrop level, and here's a geologist pointing out a much smaller fold. And smaller still, you can see folds in thin section. This is a microscopic view of a biotite mineral that's been folded. If we were to slice those rocks in either one of those previous folds and look at the minerals, we'd probably see something like this under the microscope. Now we define two primary types of folds. One is called a syncline, the other is an anticline. We're going to start with the syncline. Now geologists very commonly remember which is which because syncline sort of sounds like sinking, and in a syncline the middle does in fact look like it has sunk. That's not where the word comes from though. It comes from Sin meaning together and cline meaning inclined or, or bent or tilted. So the limbs of the fold are tilted towards each other in a syncline. That's the origin of the word. The interesting thing about synclines and the way that you can distinguish them is that the youngest rocks show up in the center of a syncline. So if you look at either of the diagrams on the, on the top, where you really can tell the relative ages of the rocks because you know the sequences, you can tell that if you start walking on one side of the syncline and you go walk all the way across it, that you'll cross from older rocks into younger rocks and then back into older rocks again. Whenever you see the same sequence of rocks repeated in the, in the opposite order, think about a fold, and if young is in the center, then it is a syncline. Look at that upper right picture with the different colored layers because we're going to pull it out in the next view. So there is that block diagram at the top, and I have just flipped it and turned it into a map. And so the diagram at the bottom might be a map that a geologist draws of this particular syncline, where you have the older green rocks and then middle-aged brown and young orange, and then middle-aged brown and older green again across a map view. An anticline is just the opposite, and it comes from anti meaning away and cline meaning um, angled. So the two limbs are angled away from each other in an anticline, and it looks a bit like a dome. The center is pushed up, and therefore, in the opposite of synclines, the older rocks show up in the center of an anticline. So if you're walking across the surface 
of one of these folds, you would come from, from uh, younger rocks into older rocks and back into younger rocks again. And that's how you know you're in an anticline. Anticlines tend to, among other things, be nice traps for liquids in rocks like oil and gas and water. And so uh, geologists look for anticlines as a place where oil and gas might be found. Now, not all folds are fold axes are linear. Sometimes you can get folds that are really rather circular, and a circular sort of an anticline is called a dome. And that's where, again, you have the older rocks showing up in the middle, younger rocks in the center, because there's been some sort of uplift in the middle. The photograph in the lower right is a dome in, in the central U.S., and you can see the very resistant rocks around the edges of it that are all tipped away just like an anticline's rocks are tipped away from the center, so they are in a dome. The geologic map on the left shows you a dome that uh, is in England. This is a very old geologic map from England showing a dome, and the older rocks again in the center um, let you know that this is a dome you're looking at. The other option would be a basin. A basin is rather like a syncline. It's, a, it's sunk down in the middle, and therefore the youngest rocks are in the middle. Uh, did you know that Michigan is essentially one huge basin? There's the state of Michigan and the Michigan Basin. Um, even if you can't read the geologic formations, you can tell that the youngest rocks here are in the center because in the um, key on the left, they're at the top. Remember, we geologists, we always like to put the youngest things at the top. So pink is at the top. It must be the youngest rock. Therefore, this must be a basin. So here's a cross-section showing some syn synclines and anticlines formed by compression. Can you find the anticlines? Pick one out. There are a couple right there. <laughs> 